All right, team. In this report rating quickie, we'll be now going back to the start of the report where we'll be re looking at the often misunderstood abstract. We'll be sticking to the usual format today. We're starting with some information regarding the abstract along with a quick tip. Then we'll be looking at some two example feedbacks of different qualities to hopefully find out what makes them bad and what makes them good. And finishing off with some recommendations for further reading. The abstract is often the first thing the reader sees after the report's title. However, quite interestingly, we often wait until the full report is complete before writing it. This is because the abstract is a bit like a book's blurb. Stand alone from the book itself, found on the back, that this is for a report, it's stand alone and found before the report itself, and they both attempt to do the same thing. Hook the reader to read on. Unlike the bob, you don't have to create suspense, you let it all out, like a movie review with the spoilers, tell the reader everything they need to know to answer, does this report align to my interests? As such, the abstract should include details about the background, the aims, the methodology, the results and discussion. There shouldn't be anything new in the abstract, instead the abstract should be an abstraction of the actual report itself, meaning you can actually just take sentences from the body of the report, edit them, make them more concise and reuse them in the abstract. The abstract shouldn't be long, less than a page, but in this short space you must boil down your full, full report into few short paragraphs. Now this may seem daunting, but I've got a quick tip to help. My one quick tip is to use the free paragraph structure. This structure includes three paragraphs the problem paragraph, the solution paragraph, and the outcome paragraph. The problem paragraph should include all the details from the report's context, problem, and aim. So this should all come from your introduction and aim section, as seen in the visual aid. The solution paragraph should include details about the report's methodology and results. So again, we're just taking stuff from the methodology and results section. And finally, the outcome should include details from the report's interpretation and future work. So this should just be from the discussion and the future work. Additionally, this visual aid is done in a way where the width of the section is the breadth of which you write. Now what I mean by this is, like, look at our aim. The aim has got to be the most concise out of all of them. It's not very broad, it's because, so you don't do any fluffy writing. Yeah, additionally, you might want to avoid detailing the sub-aims, as this has quite a lot of detail that may be superfluous, because um, obviously your sub-aims should work towards your overall aim. But your aim, really, in your abstract should just be verbatim, copy and pasted from your aim section. The following sections take from the respective, however, the following sections take from the respective main report sections. The methodology, for example, However, these paragraphs can be more broadly written as they progress. So you don't have to give all the details about your methodology. You can maybe just say it's a comparative study in which we compare these web app scanners across these experiments. And that's how you do it rather than giving every excruciating detail. There's a little bit of abstraction, as in there's just a little bit less detail, but don't forget to include all the main highlights for each section. Moving on, here's the marking rubric for an abstract. As you can see, there are three criteria for the abstract. Purpose, methods, results. It's almost like they want you to use the free paragraph structure. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So rather than show you a complete abstract, I'm just gonna show you some feedback. Here's a poor examples feedback, focusing on web app vulnerability scanners. The first comment is there's too little detail in the abstract following by be too short. These issues are often at odds with each other. Getting the balance between details and length is hard, but by following the free paragraph structure, you should find this balance much more easier. So down from that, we've got the format requires refinement. As you can see from the next comment, they've used bullet points in the abstract. Try to avoid this. Abstracts should be as plain as they come. No fancy business, just normal English, there's no tables, no pictures, just writing. The following two comments are closely related. First, you could tell there were going to be structural problems because the report starts with this paper. 
This means they've not used the free paragraph structure because this paper will usually come under the aim section. This sub-comment shows this explicitly. Finally, the comments on the specific sections of the abstract show the overall quality was poor. This would not receive a good mark. Here's a decent example of feedback. This feedback starts with three simple errors, which you can get wrong once, but never again. The abstract appeals before the table of contents. It shouldn't be numbered, and as I've said before, it should be plain Jane. Doesn't include any references in your abstract. The other comments show this example is much better than the previous, yet some refinement would be beneficial. As you can see, the methodology isn't concise and the details of the latter sections drop in quality. So make sure you read your drafts and make sure there's no loose threads. The penultimate comment is a wee tricky one. It's focused on the language, but some poor practices re-emerge as many people struggle with writing an abstract. So when trying to wrap up your abstract, make sure you use the words properly and don't say overall or finally twice. This abstract is generally let down by the minor miscellaneous issues. However, beyond that, it would receive an, an okay to good mark. Here are some further reading resources for writing abstracts. There is no specific phrase bank page for this episode because as I've touched on, the abstract is just taking content from the rest of the report. So, to summarise this episode, we've discussed the abstracts in quite a lot of detail. We've spoken about how abstracts are standalone from the document, but should contain nothing new, simply an abstraction of the details found within. We've seen some good and bad practices through our feedback exemplars, which hopefully you can learn from. Finally, we've seen some other resources which you can check out to learn more about abstracts. That's all for me, folks. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and good luck.